My job for the next, uh, the rest of the afternoon is really to be a very diligent timekeeper. So I'm going to keep this program moving forward and quickly so that we can hear from all of these companies this afternoon. And we're going to start our afternoon session by introducing, if you would please welcome, Quickly. Ah, bonjour. Je suis James. I'm James from Quickly. It's nice to see you all here at the web. Um, I'd like to tell you the story of, of why we're here and how long it took to get here today. Um, the Internet of Things for us started about 15 years ago when we started looking at buildings. Tony, my partner, and I, he was a merchant uh, navy shipping guy, and he knew to get back home, to have the energy to get home, was essential. And he then started working in buildings and saw the huge flaws in the way we run our buildings. So we've done some work in very big buildings, very beautiful buildings, very beautiful old and new buildings. Here at the headquarters of the um, City of London and BP's headquarters, which doesn't scale. So we're providing advice, but there are many, many more buildings out there. So we were given a challenge by EDF to try and get this down to something more scalable. We took a tower block with 117 homes. They had a heating bill in euros of about 150,000. Our consultancy costs were about 18,000 euros. The savings achieved were 30%, which is not shabby. The time taken was a month. And the payback, 19 weeks. 19 weeks sounds very accept acceptable as a payback. But these are big buildings, and it's a lot of time. So we thought about this a bit, and we thought four weeks per building. 500 buildings per consultant life. I could do 500 buildings in my life. That means we need a million consultants to handle the world. That's too many consultants. <laughs> it's too expensive. It's way too slow. And that's before they save you anything. That's a, you know consultants. They will charge you for advice, not for savings. So we assembled a team around Europe, people involved in meteorology, people involved in control devices, people control, involved in smart meter data, um, mathematics, pattern recognition. It's all based on pattern recognition. And we set some objectives. And this might explain the name. Kilowatts, powerful. We needed a powerful tool. We needed an intelligent tool. We wanted something a million times faster and about a thousand times less expensive. That means that we can get into every building on the planet. In fact, our target was to achieve this for a benefit for, of about 15% of energy costs in buildings for the price of a decent cup of coffee each week. So I'd like to take you to the demo. This is genuinely the launch right now, today. Hasn't been seen elsewhere. And hopefully it'll work. Well, there we are. If you can imagine I'm an energy manager and I have a responsibility for a 1,000 buildings, I have things going wrong all over the place. I need that distilled down. I need the noise taken out. What am I focused on? Top left, this is my performance. This is not how much I'm spending, it's how much I'm wasting. We don't believe there's any other product on the market that can measure waste from consumption data. That's, again, the maths of pattern recognition. He has a performance history, this uh, zoomable lump of green at the top. It tells him how he's doing. He knows how many buildings he's got that have real issues, how many are newly coming up as issues, and how many have been resolved. Um, and at the bottom, he has his list of problem sites. The accumulated cost for those that have been in problem stayed for a long time, and the rate of loss. So the new problems that are going to hit him soon if he doesn't act. So if we take this list on the right, it's effectively like a search engine, but that doesn't work search semantically for the word waste. It actually searches energy efficiency and the top hits are the ones that aren't. So a sample site, if I can get my mouse right. Uh, Liverpool One is a huge uh, shopping centre, as it happens, in uh, um, north of England. A bit of context information. And he can obviously, and there are various Google app-rated ways of viewing the data. It's on this list for a very good reason. Quickly has assessed that he needs a report. Now, if you remember that report I spoke about, that was two guys working for a month to deliver. What I'm going to do now is generate a report. I hope. <laughs> and there it comes, finished. Download. And quite genuinely, this does a large proportion 
of what I could do with my colleague in two months. Pattern recognition and IT, the Internet of Things, bringing it all together. So an anonymous report, because we have to protect the guilty of energy waste, but giving them a summary, telling them what's going on, what actions they should take, how much they could save. That's a weekly profile of consumption in the summer and winter. At the bottom, summer, they're heating. Why are there lumps during the day in gas consumption in summer? It's crazy. No reason for that at all. So now if I can remember how to get back, um, I want to... Ooh, hang on, back on the browser, excuse me. I want to take you a little bit through without too much detail. Oh, goodness. Um, very quickly, wrapping up, he can diagnose what he's got, see his problems, have them explained and visualized to him, and as far as we're concerned, the Internet, oh dear, the Internet of Things, I'll leave that, is about pulling these things together, but there's huge changes coming. Software as a service can solve a lot of them. They're all connected. Think of the pie, uh, Raspberry Pi. 50 pounds worth of equipment that can replace 10,000 pounds worth of control functionality in a building. That's huge. There's going to be a lot of change. We're going to back the energy managers. We think the world cares about energy. We all care some of the time, at least. We all need to care more of the time. And it's my mother's 80th birthday, so I'd like to say happy birthday, Mum, and God bless you. And thank you for listening. All right, James, come on over here. I don't know if it really is your mother's birthday, but that's how you get the forgiveness for uh, going over your time for 20 seconds. All right, our judges will take it from here. The, uh, I guess in the beginning, I was a little unclear. You are building a, a software as a service that is used by energy managers who manage commercial buildings, correct? Yes. SME market. Where, where do you get your data from for um, these individual buildings? Is this working? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Um, an exa- well, this data here comes from EDF. Um, we have data coming from uh, Gazprom and contracts with ENBV, uh, Energy of Baden-Württemberg. Um, they provide the data because they collect it for their billing purposes. But they want to add value because they are basically um, serving a utility market which is very hard to differentiate. If you can actually add a service, you can compete not on price but on quality and you can retain customers. So it's actually amazing, but energy customer, uh, companies want people to use less energy. And that's bottom line, that's where we get the data from. Is, are there any privacy issues there? Sorry? Are there any privacy issues there? Uh, Do I have, have to opt have in consent. as a consumer? Uh, you, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, Basically, there are a whole load of regulatory frameworks, but these energy companies handle that for us. Basically, they can't release it to us unless their client has said it's okay, and then from us, it's absolutely free. They, obviously, they're a client login and so on, but it's all pre-authorized, so we personally don't have any issues with that at yeah. all. So I'm, I'm also curious to understand more about the data input. Yeah. So exactly what does that entail? Does that mean you have to go out and get working relationships with government agencies? Mm-hmm. How, just exactly what are all the steps involved in, in getting that data there? Because that's, that's the most important thing, right? Okay, the steps that took place a few years ago, um, there's a European directive as an example. Um, in fact, the uh, chair of the implementation committee of the European Performance and Building Directive is one of our advisors, which is quite cool. But there is a directive that says every house in Europe, we're talking slightly bigger than houses, we're talking commercial, but every house in Europe is going to be smart metered by 2020. There are already hundreds of thousands of buildings where this has been done. It's being provided for. The data, the traction is there. People want the service. And so actually, it, it, it is a problem, but it's a problem that a huge industry is already solving for us. So to what extent is this a diagnosis tool versus a monitoring tool? Because when I looked at the demo, the demo you've made, said, so, well, you know, these guys are eating in summer. All right, I think you're going to do that once. You're not going to do it twice. So once you have made the first wave of improvements, looking at the first report, how much value is there in the software moving forward as a monitoring tool? OK, um, I want to go a tiny bit technical now. Excuse me. Um, when you maintain a boiler in a building, to, to maintain the boiler, you have to switch it on. If it's in the middle of summer and you're maintaining it, you switch it on, you do your tests, you set up your carburation, you walk away, and if you leave it off control, it's gone wrong. When a member of the public is in a building and complains about the heat, or in a pub, and says, hey, it's a bit cold, the guy turns up the thermostat, he forgets to turn it down again because the other customers will then just open the door, let the heat out. So actually, it's not the Internet of Things in terms of buildings, 
It's our interaction with the, the real things in the real world. And it's, without being nasty, it's the people that mess it up. Um, so I think, I think that's the answer. It, it is a continually evolving nightmare trying to stay on top of problems. I've never walked into a building that I can't save 20% on their energy. And how much do you plan to charge for the service? Uh, and how does this relate to the acquisition cost? I mean, what is going to be the sales model to, to get to them? Uh, OK. Um, the utilities we're talking to typically want to offer some sort of freemium service. So that basically, this is a customer loyalty benefit, which will be a very low thing. They'll pay a license fee for us just to, to use that basic level of service. Thereafter, we'll be looking for, obviously, upsells, um, where people are saying, hey, I want a little bit more of this. And there are also cross-sales. If you know what a, an, en an energy company doesn't know what the people do with the energy, we do. Because we know what they're doing with the energy, we can tell them their boilers are too big. So you can actually replace plant and equipment. And this opens up a whole vista of scalable energy management services that the utilities can't currently get at. And that's, I think, yeah, the, the model is going to be complex. Uh, we've looked at metrics. Um, we're looking at annual subscriptions, so our metrics will come slow. Um, but actually, because of the cash flow implications and the timing of this, I mean, big companies make decisions when they want to, not when little guys want to. Um, so I think it, it's wise for us to go on a cash flow and keep it lean until we're growing. OK, thank the, you. Good time for one more question okay, and a the, quick the, answer. The little bit I know about commercial you know, building energy management, there are some pretty elaborate energy management, management systems out there that yeah. are sort of siloed between buildings. Why? Well, what's, the, what's the value proposition for a, a building manager to switch from what they already have today to, to what you're doing? Oh, at, at the moment, well, it, it, it depends on the market segmentation. Big buildings, like the ones I showed at the beginning of the slide, have thousands or millions of pounds worth of control equipment in them. And those buildings, there's not an awful lot we can do in terms of controlling better. We can maybe spot some things they could be doing better, but then they intervene, they reprogram. But our real target market, and we're talking places you guys go for a coffee, and I, I'm not going to mention any brands. But, oh, Nespresso, but that's uh, not a retail outlet. Um, in those places, you don't have specialist engineers. You have someone with a thermostat, a time clock maybe, maybe some ability to intervene, but so it's not an air control. You're targeting a segment be right below the, the, big, the major buildings, but it's Absolutely. that next, next yes, for the scale. Right. Good. With that, we're going to have to uh, call it good. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks uh, for your questions, and we will uh, see you over in the pavilion later on. Thank you, and good luck to the other competitors. Thanks, James. Thanks, guys.